Electrical safety is no accident. Shock, electrocution, arc flash, and arc blast are potential hazards faced every day by people working on or around energized lines or equipment. Burn injuries as a consequence of an arc flash incident are a major concern in today's workplace. The most severe burns are the result of the combustion or melting of clothing, not by the original exposure to the electric arc flash. Most synthetic fabrics melt at temperatures below 315 degrees Celsius or 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Acetate, polyester, nylon, polypropylene, and spandex, either alone or in blends, cannot be used. These materials melt as a result of arc flash exposure conditions, resulting in more extensive burn injuries. Fortunately, advances in flame-resistant fabrics have resulted in clothing that will protect workers from this hazard. The American Society for Testing and Materials, or ASTM, has developed test methods and set the standards that these products must meet. The following tests will show you how various fabrics respond to these rigorous standards. In this test, the mannequin on the right is wearing a natural cotton fiber garment. The mannequin on the left is wearing a flame retardant or FR treated garment. This was a 14 to 16 cal per centimeter squared exposure. Notice how the cotton fabric continues to burn after the arc flash occurs. In a 14 to 16 cal per centimeter squared exposure, a worker would most likely be stunned or unconscious as his clothing continued to burn. Although the worker represented by the mannequin wearing the arc rated FR clothing would experience the same initial impact of the arc flash, they would not experience the subsequent injuries as the clothing will not sustain combustion. In the next demonstration, the mannequin is exposed to a 64 to 67 cal per centimeter squared arc flash. This is an extreme situation that could easily kill or injure a person not wearing the appropriate PPE or personal protective equipment. To make matters worse, the mannequin is wearing non-FR clothing and a non-arc rated face shield. Face shields not tested to ASTM F2178 standards will melt and drip when exposed to the intense heat generated during an arc flash. Non-rated face shields are not appropriate when working in or around energized equipment. As you have seen, the mannequin has two big problems. The clothing continues to burn and the face shield begins to melt. Combining the burning clothes with the dripping face shield material, the victim of this type of accident would suffer life-threatening burns. In this demonstration, the mannequin is exposed to 40 to 45 cal per centimeter squared arc flash. Although the mannequin is wearing FR clothing, you can notice some warping of the face shield. While the face shield would protect the user from dangerous heat, it does not provide protection from shrapnel ejected during an arc flash or arc blast. ANSI rated safety glasses or goggles should be worn under the hood or face shield to prevent injury from flying debris. In the two seconds it takes for this flash to start and finish, it is obvious that no one could react quickly enough to get away from the explosive force of such an event. The only way to be protected is to wear the proper PPE from head to toe. To reduce the risk of exposure to an arc flash, work on de-energized equipment whenever feasible. Salisbury provides a complete solution to arc flash protection. This includes appropriate FR clothing, face shields, electrically insulating rubber gloves, dielectric boots, insulated tools and accessories needed to greatly reduce the risk of serious injury from arc flash exposure. Salisbury's ProWear line of arc flash clothing is fully compliant with both NFPA 70E-2004 
and ASTM F1506. It also meets the requirements of OSHA standard 1910.269. This includes jackets, pants, coveralls, and bib overalls with arc thermal performance values or ATPV that range from 8 cal per centimeter squared to 100 cal per centimeter squared. Salisbury's Arc Flash clothing is constructed with Westex Endura Ultra Soft. Endura Ultra Soft fabrics are guaranteed flame resistant for the life of the garment while retaining the natural comfort and feel of cotton. To simplify specifying and ordering, Salisbury offers Arc Flash kits that provide all the PPE necessary to protect a worker from both electrical and Arc Flash hazards. Each kit includes the appropriate rated arc flash clothing, rubber insulating gloves, leather protectors, a glove bag, safety glasses, hard hat, and durable storage carrying bag. It's important that arc flash clothing be properly maintained to ensure its reliability and long service life. Here are some of the basic care requirements you should follow. Wash garments at the temperature necessary to clean them not exceeding 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Never use chlorine bleach or additives that contain chlorine when washing the garments. Use a mild detergent. Prior to wearing, inspect the seams, zipper, and hook and pile fastener systems to make sure there is no damage that might compromise the function of the garment. The appropriate care and use of electrically insulating rubber gloves and accessories is critical to maintaining worker safety. Electrically insulating rubber gloves are the first line of defense against contact with energized equipment or lines. They are designed for purposeful contact with energized conductors or equipment. For this reason, it is vital that you understand how to properly use and care for them. Properly sized gloves are important to ensure worker comfort and maximize user dexterity. Measuring the hand is easy, as shown in this demonstration. Using a soft measuring tape, measure around the palm of the hand between the thumb and the index finger. This distance, measured in inches, is the appropriate glove size. If you will be wearing cotton glove liners under the rubber gloves, increase the measurement by one half inch to compensate for the added thickness. Prior to each use, it is vital that you inspect your rubber gloves to make sure they are safe to use. Damage that has occurred while in storage or during the last use could result in them being useless for protecting the user from electrical shock. The flaws you'll be checking for include cuts, punctures, ozone cutting, UV checking, embedded foreign material, oil contamination, or gloves that leak air. Let's take a closer look at some of these potential hazards often found in rubber insulating gloves. Working around sharp objects causes the cuts, tears, or abrasions found on rubber gloves. As seen in this photo, it's fairly easy to spot these flaws. In a few minutes, we'll take a close look at techniques used to thoroughly examine the surface of the gloves. Petroleum products can quickly damage rubber gloves. Swelling, stickiness, loss of elasticity, and hardness are all signs of damage from petroleum products on rubber goods. As shown in these photos, it's usually easy to spot this type of damage. Avoid exposing the gloves to any chemicals that contain petroleum products. Products that may also contain petroleum include some detergents, hand soaps, or talcum powder. Salisbury offers a complete line of cleaning compounds that contain no petroleum-based ingredients. When washing rubber gloves, use only a mild detergent. Salisbury's Salco Cleaner is a specially formulated detergent developed for the safe cleaning of rubber gloves and other rubber insulating protective equipment. To safely clean hands, use Salisbury's Rub-Out Hand Cleaner. Manufactured from orange peel extracts, this cleaner was developed for use by workers who wear rubber insulating gloves. It contains no petroleum products, can be used with or without water, and is completely biodegradable. To increase comfort when wearing rubber gloves, use Salisbury's 10-4 Glove Dust. Containing no harmful chemicals, 10-4 Glove Dust absorbs moisture and reduces friction for comfort and increased safety. 
Keep in mind that baby powders or medicated talcs may contain petroleum products, which will eventually damage the gloves. Another common cause of damage to rubber gloves is corona, or ozone cutting. Corona is the discharge of electricity due to ionization of the air surrounding a conductor under high voltage. This ionization and discharge produces ozone, which is a very active form of oxygen. The cutting action of ozone on rubber under mechanical stress appears as sharp cuts in the direction of the stressed areas. The degree of cutting depends upon the concentration of ozone, the amount of mechanical stress, and the duration of the exposure. Ozone damage can result if rubber protective equipment is stored near electrical generators, in substations, or anywhere else where ozone concentrations are high. To properly inspect the gloves, it's important to do an inflation test prior to each use. There are two ways to inflate gloves, through a manual operation or a portable glove inflator. To manually inflate the glove, hold the glove downward and grasp the cuff. Roll the cuff tightly to force air into the finger and palm area of the glove. Hold the inflated glove close to your face and ear to listen or feel for any air escaping from holes. While the glove is inflated, inspect the surface for cuts, abrasions, tears, or any other damage that may affect the integrity of the insulating glove. Another option for field inflation and inspection is to use Salisbury's portable G99 glove inflator. The G99 simplifies visual inspection and inflation by allowing the worker to inspect more of the surface area of the glove. The other vital part of field safety is periodic electrical testing of rubber insulating gloves. This is done on highly specialized equipment, which is available from various independent testing laboratories around the United States. For information on a test lab near you, contact your local Salisbury representative. The interval between electrical retest for rubber gloves, in other words, gloves issued for service, shall not exceed six months. Gloves that have been electrically tested, but not issued, shall not be placed into service unless they have been electrically tested within the previous 12 months. Proper storage of the gloves between uses is very important. Rubber gloves should be stored in a glove bag, usually made of canvas, with air holes in the bottom to allow for proper ventilation. Do not store more than one pair of gloves in each bag. Also, do not store gloves near sources of heat. When putting the gloves in the bag, do not fold them. Two important accessories for rubber gloves are liners and leather protectors. Glove liners are a way to make the gloves more comfortable to wear. They absorb perspiration when it's hot and keep the hands warm when it's cold. Glove liners are made from absorbent fabric and accommodate a range of hand sizes. Leather protectors should always be worn over electrical insulating gloves to provide needed mechanical protection against abrasions, cuts, and punctures. Leather protectors should never be used as work gloves and work gloves should never be used as leather protectors. Leather protectors are specially designed to fit over the rubber glove without pinching or stressing the rubber. By pinching or stressing the rubber, there is an increase in the likelihood of damage from ozone. Leather protectors should be inspected for tears, cuts, open seams, grease and oil, embedded wire or wood splinters that could possibly come in contact with the rubber gloves. For example, oil-soaked protector gloves will leak to the rubber gloves beneath, causing them to be damaged. Protectors should be replaced when they are suspected of having any of these conditions. To avoid the risk of electrical flashover, the distance between the end of the cuff of the protector and the end of the cuff of the rubber glove shall not be less than that specified in ASTM F496. For example, with Class 0 and 00 rubber gloves, the distance between the top of the protector and the top of the cuff of the rubber glove is one half an inch minimum. For Class 1, it would be one inch. Class 2 is two inches. Class 3 is three inches. And Class 4 is four inches. The proper care and use of PPE can greatly reduce the risk of serious injury resulting from electrical arc flash or shock. It's important to make these guidelines part of your daily work routine to help ensure your safety on the job. 
If you are unsure about safe work practices, get help from a qualified person before you start the job. From all of us at Salisbury, thanks for watching. We hope you have gained new insights on staying safe when working on or around energized electric equipment. For more information about our products and services, please visit our website at www.arcsafety.com or www.whsalisbury.com. You can also call us toll-free at 877-406-4501. Salisbury, your number one resource for personal electrical safety protection.